the director of Movie Bar Production. Here to do tonight's production of William Shakespeare's Twelfth Night Raw Ish. Hooray! I'm still not used to doing this without people. Now, I suppose the easiest way for me to uh, get closer to the sense of having people around me is to call the players to the stage. Hello! Shakespeare's times in a bad fire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 1520s. Great. Uh, yes. So, uh, normally what we do is we have a whole bunch of people on the stage, and they each come take turns pulling a name out of this here hat to find out who they're playing. Now, obviously they can't do that, because then that would require us being in the same room, at which point, why would we bother doing it like this? Let's just do it at the show. So I am going to pull names on their behalf tonight. Uh, let's see, so let's go first. Just, I'm going to go in order that I see you on my screen. I don't know how it looks everywhere else. But uh, Tom, you will be Sebastian! Big brother. Yes. Uh, Nicole Alley will be Antonio! The pirate. Sarah Wallace will be Orsino! Joshua Klingman will be Sir Andrew Aguicheek. Woo! Now, there are two other roles, specifically that of the captain and the officer. Um, and I'm playing those roles because they're about three lines each, and I don't want to have someone do that. trying to recreate here. As I said, this is not normally how we do things. Normally we do things in a bar. And that involves a drinking game. Ah. And as this is one of Shakespeare's comedies, one of his finest, frankly, we're going to go back to the classic boozy bard drinking game, which, sing along if you know it, every time there is a dick joke, everybody drinks. Now, how to spot a Shakespearean dick joke. Rule number one, if you think it's a dick joke, it's a dick joke. Anytime that you're just like under your breath, that's what she said. <laughs> no, that's what he intended. That is how he meant you to take it. They didn't teach you that in high school. I don't know why. But yeah, these plays are absolutely filthy. So enjoy. And uh, also, feel free to uh, 
drop us in the comments and let us know, oh yeah, this is a line that we should be drinking on. now just about the Trojan War, which is way more interesting. Now, did we specifically put that show in June? Because June is Pride Month, and it now kind of centers on the relationship between Patroclus and Achilles? Maybe? I'm not going to say we didn't do that, but, uh, but yeah, that will be at 7 p.m. on June Wait, before 
Enter Viola and the captain. What what country, friends, is this? Yar, this is Illyria, baby. And what should I do in Illyria? My brother is in Elysium. Perchance he is not drowned. What think you? It is It is perchance that you yourself were saved. Virtuous maid, the daughter of a count that died some twelve months since, and leaving her in the protection of her of his son, her brother, who shortly also died, who for whose dear love they say she hath abjured the company and sight of men. Oh, then I serve that lady and might not be delivered to the world, but it made mine own occasion mellow, but my estate is that were hard to compass, because she would admit no kind of suit. Sir Toby Belch and Maria. <sighs> what a plague means my niece to take the death of her brother thus. I am sure Tyr is an enemy to me. By my cross, Sir Toby, you must come in early or night. Your cousin, the lady, takes great exceptions for your ill. Why? Let her accept. For accepted. I that you must confine yourself within the modest limits of order. Confine. <laughs> I'll confine myself no finer than I am. These clothes are good enough to drink in. I'll show you how that works. <sighs> and so, be these boots too that you can't see because my legs don't go up quite that high. And maybe not. Let them hang themselves in their own bootstraps. Do it. Let them ah. hang down there. That quaffing and drinking will undo you. Uh, Malin talked of it yesterday, and of a foolish knight that you brought in one night here to be her wooer. Who? Oh. Sir Andrew Agusik? He's as tall a man as any in Illyria. And what's that to the purpose? Why? He has 3,000 ducats a year. I mean, <laughs> well, he'll have but a year in all those ducats. He's a very fool and a prodigal. Oh. By this hand, it's the important one, it's the one that holds the beer, they are scoundrels and subtractors that so say of them. Who are they? They that add, um, moreover, he's drunk nightly in your company. <laughs> with drinking healths to my niece. <laughs> uh, I'll drink to her as long as there is passage in my throat and drink in Lyria. Like this. Oh, that's beer. She's a coward, a coarse girl that will not drink to my niece 
till his brains turn to the toe like a parish top. Ah, what witch. Calisthenio Volgaro, for here comes Sir Andrew Agassiz. Enter, Sir Andrew. Sir Toby Belch! How now, Sir Toby Belch? Sweet, sweet Sir Andrew. Oh, bring it in. Bless you, fair shrew. And you too, sir. Uh, it costs, Sir Andrew, a cost. Good mistress, a cost. I desire better acquaintance. My name is Mary, sir. Good mistress Mary, a cost. Uh, 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 you mistake, uh, knight. A cost is fronter, order, woo her, assail her. By my troth, I would not undertake her in this company. Is that the meaning of a cost? Fare you well, gentlemen. And thou, let walk so, Sir Andrew. Wouldst thou mightiest never draw a sword again? And you part so, mistress? I would might never draw a sword again. Fair lady, do you think you have fools in hand? Sir, I have not you by the hand. Mary, but you shall have. And here's my hand. Now, now sir, thought is free. I pray you, bring your hand to the butter bar and let it drink. Okay. Yeah, I've changed my mind. You're kind of sweet. Wherefore, sweetheart? What's your metaphor? A dry guess, sir. Are you full of them? Aye, sir. I have them at my fingers and Mary. Now I let go your hand, and I am barren. Uh. Oh. oh, nice. Thou lackest a cup of canary. When did I see thee so put down? Never in your life, I think. Unless you see canary put me down. <laughs> I'll ride home tomorrow. Sir Toby, your niece will not be seen, or if she be, it's four to one, she'll none of me. The Count himself, here hard, by woos her. Yes, the Count. One, two, three, ah, ah, ah. Uh, she'll none of the Count. She'll not match above her degree, either in estate, years, or wit. I've heard her swear it. Touch. Life in it, man. Stay a month longer. <laughs> I am a fellow, old thou strangest mind in the world. I delight in masks and revels, sometimes all together. I felt good at these kickshaws tonight. That's a good choice, too. Catch up with it. Tell me it's your lot. Is it? I thought I said my bit. I'm gonna drink some more. Art thou good at these kickshaws, night? Skip to the next one. Oh, you want me to do the next one? Ah, what is thy excellence in a gallant night? Babe, I can cut a caper. And I can cut the mutton to it. And I think I have the back trick simply as strong as any man in Illyria. Shall we set about some rebels? Uh, what shall we do else? <laughs> Were we not born under Taurus? Taurus? Dodge Taurus. That sides and heart. Ah, uh, no, no, sir. It's legs and thighs. Let me see the caper. Ha! Higher! <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Scene four, Duke of 
Esposito's Palace, enter Viola in man's attire, and Duke Orsino. Oh. 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 Stand you a while aloof, Cesario. Thou knowest no best, no less but all. I have unclasped to thee the book even of my secret soul. Therefore, good youth, address thy gate unto her. Be not denied access. Stand at her doors and tell them, there shall thy fixed foot shall grow till thou have audience. That's uh, a, a bit much. Uh, so, so if she does actually like start yelling at me, what do I do? <laughs> oh, then unfold the passion of my love. Surprise her with discourse of my dear faith. It shall become thee well to act my woes. She will attend it better in thy youth than a nuncio's of more grave aspect. I think not so, my lord. Dear lad, believe it. For they shall yet belie thy happy years, thou that say thou art a man. Diana's lip is not more smooth and rubinous. Thy small pipe is as a maiden's organ shrill and sound, and all is semblative of a woman's heart. <laughs> I know thy constellation is right apt for this affair. Prosper well in this, and thou shalt live as freely as thy lord to call his fortunes thine. Ah, more uh, y'all. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll do my best to, to woo your lady. Exit Duke. Uh, yet, uh, barful strife. Whoever I woo myself would be his wife. Ooh, exit. Scene five, Olivia's house. Enter clown. Mm. Wit, and it be thy will, put me into good fooling. Those wits that think they have thee do very oft prove, prove fools. What says Quinapolis? Better a witty fool than a foolish wit. <laughs> ah. Enter Olivia with Malvolio. <sighs> God bless thee, late. Take the fool away. Uh, do you not hear, fellows? Take the lady away. Sir, I bade them take you away. <gasps> Good Madonna! Give me leave to prove you a fool. Can you do it? Dexterously, good Madonna. <laughs> well, sir, for want of other idleness, I abide your proof. Good Madonna, why mournest thou? Good fool, my brother's death. Mm, I think his soul is in hell, Madonna. I know his soul is in heaven, fool. More fool, Madonna, to mourn your brother's soul being in heaven. Take away the fool, gentlemen. <laughs> what think you of this fool, Malvolia? Doth he not mend? Yes, and shall do till the pangs of death shake him. Infirmity that decays the wise doth ever make the better fool. God send you, sir, a speedy infirmity for the better increasing of your folly. What say you to that, Malvolio? I marvel your ladyship takes delight in such a barren rascal. Oh, you are sick of self-love, Malvolio. Uh, enter Maria. Madame, there is at the gate a young gentleman much desires to speak with you. From the Count Orsino, is it? I know not, madame. It is a fair young man, and well attended. Who of my people hold him in delay? To Toby, madame, your kinsman. Fetch him off, I pray you. He speaks nothing but madmen. Fie on him. Exit Maria. 
Go you, Malvolio. If it be a suit from the Count, I am sick, or not at home, what you will, but dismiss it. Is it Malvolio? Now you see, sir, how your fooling grows old and people dislike it. Well, thou hast spoke for us, Madonna, as if thy eldest son should be a fool, whose skull Joe cram with brains, for here he comes. One of thy kin has a most weak pia mater. Mm -hmm. Enter Sir Toby Belch. By mine honor, half drunk, why, what is he at the gate, cousin? A gentleman. A gentleman. What gentleman? It's a gentle man here. <laughs> ah, plague of these pickle herring. How now, sot? Ah, good Sir Toby. Cousin, cousin, how have you come so early by this lethargy? Lechery. I define, I mean, defy lechery. There's, there's one at the gate. Hey, Mary, what is he? Let him be the devil, and he will. I care not. Give me faith. Say I, well, it's all one. Sit and tell me about you. What's a drunken man like, fool? Like a drowned man, a fool, and a madman. One draft above heat makes him a fool, the second mads him, and the third drowns him. Go thou and seek the crowner, and let him sit on my cause. For he is in the third degree of drink, he's drowned. Go look after him. He is but mad yet, Madonna, and the fool shall look to the madman. Exit. Bring it to Malpolio. Madam, yond young fellow swears he will speak with you. I told him you were sick. He takes on him to understand so much, and therefore comes to speak with you. I told him you were asleep. He seems to have a full knowledge of that, too, and therefore comes to speak with you. What is to be said to him, lady? He's fortified against denial. Tell him he shall not speak with me. Has been told so, and he says... He'll stand at your door like a sheriff's post and be the supporter to a bench, but he'll speak with you. What kind of man is he? No, a very ill manner. He'll speak with you, will you or no? Of what personage in years is he? Not yet old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy. Tis with him in standing water between boy and man. Let him approach. Call in my gentlewoman. Gentlewoman, my lady calls. Exit and re-enter Maria. Give me my veil. Come, throw it over my face. We'll once more hear Orsino's embassy. Enter Viola as Cesario. The uh, honorable lady, no, the honorable lady, no, no, which is the honorable lady of the house? Speak to me, I shall answer for her. Your will? Most uh, radiant, uh, exquisite, and um, unmatchable beauty. I, I pray you, tell me if, if this be the lady of the house, for, for I never saw her. I would be loath to cast away my speech, for besides that it is excellently well penned. Uh, I have taken great pains to con it. I do not usurp myself. I am. Mm -hmm. I, I I will on with my speech in, in your praise, and then show you the, the heart of my message. Come to what is important in it. I forgive you the praise. Um, I took great pains to study it, and it is poetical. You sure you don't want to hear it? Well, it is more like to be feigned. I pray you, keep it in. Will you request sail, sir? Here lies your way. No good swabber. I'm, I'm to hull here a little longer. Some mollification for your giant sweet lady. Uh, tell me your mind. I am a messenger. Speak your office. It alone concerns your ear. What are you? What would you? Uh, what? I am, and what I would, are as secret as maidenhead, a superior uh, divinity. To anyone else, not divinity. Revelation. 
Give us the place alone. We will hear this divinity. Excellent, Maria. Now, sir, what is your text? Most sweet lady. Oh, comfortable doctrine, and much may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Orsino's bosom. In his bosom? In what chapter of his bosom? <laughs> to answer by the method in the first of his heart. Oh, I've read it. It's heresy. Have you no more to say? Uh, but, good madam, let me see your face. Uh, have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? You are now out of your text. But we will draw the curtain and show you the picture. Look you, sir, such I, one that was this present. Is it not well enough? Excellently done, if God did all. Tis in grain, sir. Twill endure wind and weather. Ah, uh, tis, tis beauty truly blent, whose red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive. If you will leave these graces to the grave and leave the no, world no copy, though, don't die on us. We love you. Were you sent hither to praise me? Yeah, but I see what you are. You are too proud, but if you are the devil, good-looking devil, uh, my lord and master loves you. Oh, such love could be but recompensed, though you were crowned the... the what's the word? The nonpareil. Oh, the the nonpareil of beauty. <laughs> see, even the categories. <laughs> Go on, here's a letter crossed out. If, if I did love you in my master's flame, with such a suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial would I find no sense. I, I would not understand it. What, what would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate. I, I mean, I was going to stand there forever anyway. And call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of contemned love and sing them loud even in the dead of the night. Hello, your name to the reverberate hills. And make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia! Oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth. But, um, you should be you to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him say no more, unless perchance you come to me again uh, to tell me how he takes it. Fare you well. I thank you for your pains. Spend this for me. Hmm. Uh, I am no thief post, my lady. Uh, keep your purse. Hmm. My master. Not myself lacks recompense. Farewell, fair cruelty. Exit. Uh, even so quickly may one catch the plague? <laughs> Me thinks I feel this youth's perfections with an invisible and subtle stealth to creep in at my eyes. Oh, let it be. What ho, Malvolio? We enter Malvolio. Yeah, madam, at your service. Run after that same peevish messenger, the, the con con county's man. He he let, left his ring behind him. Uh, would I or not tell him I'm none of it? Um, if that youth will come this way tomorrow, I'll give him reasons for it. Uh, hi, Dame Malvolio. Madam, I will. Exit. <sighs> Fate, show thy force. Ourselves we do not owe what is decreed. And be this so... Exit. Scene two, a street. Enter Viola and Malvolio following. <clears throat> Were not you even now with the Countess Olivia? Even now, sir, on a moderate pace, I have been arrived with dinner. She returns this ring to you, sir. You may have 
saved me my pains and have taken it away yourself. Uh, ain't mine. She took it. I'll have none of it. Come, sir, you peevishly threw it to her. And her will is it should be so returned. If it be worth stopping for, there lies it in your eye. If not, be it his that finds it. <laughs> Exit. I, I left no ring with her. What's she talking about? Fortune forbid my outside have not charmed her. She made good view of me, indeed so much, that sure methought her eyes had lost her tongue. For, for she did speak and starts distractedly. Um, she, she loves me, sure. Uh, the cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger. Uh, poor lady. She were better love a dream. Disguise, I see, thou art a wickedness. Uh, wherein the pregnant enemy does much. For such as we are made of, such we be. How will this fadge? My master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him, and, and she, mistaken, seems to dote on me. This is a hell of a crazy love triangle. Uh, what, what will become of this? Hmm. As I'm a man, my state is desperate for my master's love. As as I am a woman, now, alas the day, oh, time, thou must untangle this, not I. It's too hard enough for me to untie. Exit. Scene three, Olivia's house. Enter Sir Toby Belch, Sir Andrew, and the clown. What is love? She's not hereafter, hereafter, no more. Present birth. Half present laughter, half present laughter, no more. What's to come is still unsure. What's uh, in delay, there lies no plenty. Then come and kiss me, sweet and twenty, you to stuff. What is love? Tis not hereafter, hereafter, no more. What is love? Sir Andrew? Sir Andrew, you're muted. Can't hear you, buddy. This is probably the drink. I now can speak, Andrew. Oh, hey. I'll drink. A mellifluous voice, as I am true knight. For the love of God, peace. My masters, are you mad? Or what are you? Have you no wit, manners, no honesty, but to gabble like tinkers at this time of night? We did keep time, sir, in our catches. Snack up. Sir Toby, I must be wrong with you. My lady bade me tell you. If you can separate yourself and your misdemeanors, you are welcome to the house. If not, and it would please you to take leave of her, she is very willing to be, bid you farewell. Farewell, dear heart, since I must needs be gone. <laughs> Nay, good Sir Toby. No. Uh, you show his days are almost done. Or is it even so? But I will never die. There you lie. This is much credit to you. Shall I bid him go and spare not? No, 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 you dare not. Out of tune, sir, you lie. Art any more than a steward? Dost thou think because thou art virtuous, there shall be no more kicks in ale? <laughs> yes, by right hand, and chill <laughs> mouth too. Thou art the right. Go, sir, rub your chain with crumbs. A stoop of wine, Maria. Mistress Mary, if you prized my lady's favor at anything more than contempt, 
you would not give means for this uncivil rule. She shall know of it by this hand. Excellent. <laughs> your ears. Prince Sir Toby, be patient for tonight. For Monsieur Mavolio, let me alone deal with him. If I do not gull him into a nayward and make him a common recreation, do not think I have enough enough wits, wit enough to lie straight in my bed. I know I can do it. What will thou do? <laughs> I will drop in his way some obscure epistles of love. Epistles? <laughs> oh, the epistles. I can I can write. Make sure you don't have pistols in this room, by the way. No. I, I can agree. write very like my lady, your niece. On a forgotten matter, we can hardly make a distinction of our hands. Oh, excellent. I smell a device. He shall think by the letters that thou will drop that they come from my niece and that she's in love with him. <laughs> <laughs> my preface is indeed a horse of that. And your horse will now make him an ass. <laughs> ass, I doubt not. <laughs> will be admirable. It's for royal, I warrant you. I know my physic will work with him. I will plant you two and let the fool make a third where we shall find the, where he shall find the letter. Observe his construction of it for this night to bed and dream on the other. Farewell. Excellent. Scene four, Duke Orsino's palace. Enter to Duke Orsino, Viola, and others. Oh. Hmm. Come hither, boy. If ever thou shalt love in the sweet pangs of it, remember me, for such as I am all true lovers are. Thy life upon it, young though thou art, thine I have stayed upon some favor that it loves, have it not, boy? Um, a little by your favor. Dish, what kind of woman is it? I uh, of uh, uh, your complexion. <laughs> she is not worth thee then. What years is they? Um, mm, how old are you? About, about, yeah, about, about that, yeah. Too old, by heaven. But still the woman take an elder than herself. So wish she to him. Um, yeah, but... I think it well, my lord. Uh, then let thy love be younger than thyself, or affection cannot hold the bench. For women are as roses, whose fair flower being once displayed doth fall that very hour. Are you sure? I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I guess, and 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 so they are. Alas, that they are so. I guess um, to die, but even when to they to perfection grow. Once more, Cesario, get thee beyond same sovereign cruelty. Tell her. My love. More noble than the world, prizes not quantity of dirty lands, parts that fortune
Russian half bestowed upon her. Uh, tell her I hold as giddily as fortune, but tis that miracle and queen of gems that nature pranks her in attracts my my soul i mean yeah she's got a great chest but what if she can't love you sir Be so answered, sir. Uh, yeah, okay, sir, sure, sooth, but you must say that, um, I don't know, some lady, rando lady, as, as perhaps there is, have for, for your love a great pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her, you must tell her so. Must she not then be answered? There is no woman's sides can bide the beating of so strong a passion as a love that doth give my heart, <laughs> and that I owe Olivia. I, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> what dost thou know? Too well what love women to men may owe. In faith, they are as true of heart as we. See, uh, my father had a daughter, loved a man. As it might be, perhaps, were I a woman, I should choose your lordship. And uh, what's her history? Uh, a complete blank slate, tabula rasa, my lord. She never told her love, but let concealment, like a worm in the bud, feed on her damask cheek. She pined in thought, and with a green and yellow melancholy, she sat like patience on a monument, smiling at grief. Was this not love indeed? We men may say more, swear more, but indeed, our shows are more than will. For still we prove much in our vows, but little in our love. What died thy sister of her love, my boy? I mean, I am all of the daughters of my father's house, and yet I know not. Sir, shall I to this lady? I, <laughs> that's the theme, uh, to her in haste, give her this jewel. Say my love can give no place, by no denay. Exit. Scene five, Olivia's garden. Enter Sir Toby Belch and Sir Andrew. Uh, here comes the little villain. Enter Maria. How now, my metal of India? Get ye into the box tree. A Mabelio coming down this block. He has been yonder in the sun, <laughs> practicing behavior to his own shadow this half hour. Observe him for the love of mockery. For I know this letter will be a contemplative aid of him. Close in the name of jesting. Okay. Hey. Lie there. Okay. Uh, for here comes the trout that must be caught with tickling. Excellent. Enter Malvolio. Ah, uh, tis but fortune, all is fortune. Maria once told me she did affect me, and I have heard herself come thus near that, should she fancy, it would be one of my complexion. <laughs> Blight, I could be, be the rogue. Peace, peace, I say. Ah, uh, to be Count Malvolio. Rogue. Pistol him! Pistol him! Peace, peace. Uh, 
having been three months married to her, sitting in my state, <laughs> calling my officers about me in my <clears throat> branched velvet gown, having come from a daybed where I have left Olivia sleeping. <laughs> Fire in Bridgestone. And then to have the humor of state and after a demure travel of regard, telling them I know my place as I would they know theirs. <laughs> to for my kinsman Toby. <laughs> Bolts and shackles. I frown the while and perchance wind up watch or play with my <clears throat> some rich jewel. Toby approaches, courtesies there to me. Shall this fellow live? I extend my hand to him thus, quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control. Does not Toby take you a blow to the lips then? Saying, Cousin Toby, my fortunes, having cast me on your knees, gave me this prerogative of speech. <laughs> what? 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 You must amend your drunkenness. Shout, <laughs> scab. Besides, you waste the treasure of your time with a foolish knight. That's me! I warned you on Sir Andrew. Oh, I knew. Twas I, for many do call me fool. What employment have we here? Hmm. Ah, now the woodcock is near the gin. By my life, this is my lady's hand. To the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes. Oh, her very phrases. By your leave, wax uh, soft and the impression her lucrece with which she uses to seal. Tis my lady. To whom should this be? Uh, this winsome, liver and all. Jove knows I love, but who? Lips do not move. No man must know. No man must know. Ah, what follows? The numbers altered. No man must know. This should be the Malfolio. <laughs> if this falls into thy hand, revolve. Uh, 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 if in my stars I am above thee, but be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. <laughs> be opposite with a kinsman, early with servants. Let thy tongue tang arguments of state. Oh, remember who commended thy yellow stockings and wished to see thee ever cross guarded. Farewell. She that would alter services with thee, the fortunate unhappy. <laughs> oh, daylight and champagne discovers not more. She did commend my yellow stockings of late. She did praise my leg being cross guarded. <laughs> I thank my stars I am happy. I will be strange, stout, in yellow stockings and cross guarded, even the, with the swiftness of putting on. Show when my stars be praised. Here is yet a postscript. Mm. Thou canst not choose but know who I am. If thou entertain <coughs> my love, let it appear in thy smiling. Thy smiles will become thee well. Therefore, in my presence, still smile. Dear my sweet, I prithee. Joe, I thank thee. I will smile. I will do everything thou would have of me. Yeah, exit. <laughs> the wench for this device. Oh, could I do? And ask no other dowry with her but such another jest. Nor I neither. Bring it to Maria. <laughs> if you will then see the proofs of this poor mock, his first approach before my lady, he will come to her in yellow stockings and tis a color she detests and cross-guarded a fashion she abhors, and he will smile upon her, which will now be so beautiful to her disposition, being addicted to such melancholy as she is, that it cannot but turn her into a notable content. <laughs> you will see it. Follow me. Excellent. <laughs> scene, act three, scene three, a street. Enter Sebastian and Antonio. I would not, by my will, have troubled you. 
But since you will make your pleasure of your pains, I will no further chide you. Oh, I, I could not stay behind you. My desire, more sharp than filed steel, did spur me forth. And not all love to see you, though so much as might have drawn one to a longer voyage, but jealousy, what might befall your travel? Being skillless in these parts, which to a stranger, unguided and unfriended, often prove rough and, and, and unhospitable. My willing love, the rather by these arguments of fear set forth in your pursuit. Ah, oh, my kind Antonio, I can no answer make but thanks. And thanks, and ever, often good turns are shuffled up with such a current pay. But where by my worth is my con conscience firm? You should be better dealing. What's to do? Shall we go see the relics of this town? W would you pardon me? I, I do not without danger walk these streets once in a seat by against the count his galleys. I, I did some service of such note indeed that were I taken here, it would scarce be answered. Uh, the like you slew a great number of his people. The offense is not of such a bloody nature, albeit okay. the quality of the time and quarrel might well have given us bloody argument. It might have since been answered in repaying what we took from them, which for traffic's sake, most of our city did, only myself stood out, for which if I be last in this place, I shall pay dear. Uh, do not then walk too open. Oh, it doth not fit me. Hold. Sir, here's my purse. In the south suburbs, at the Elephant, is best to lodge. Uh, why, I your purse? Happily, your eye shall light upon some toy you have desired to purchase, and your stone, I think, is not for idle market, sir. Uh, I'll be your purse bearer and leave you for an hour. To the Elephant! I do remember. Excellent. And that's the first half, folks. Turns out her brother Sebastian's alive. What? Also, I forgot to mention this at the top, but uh, in order for this thing to make any sense, you need to pretend that Viola and Sebastian, uh, when Viola is dressed as a man, are identical. It's the, it's the curse of how we do these shows. You're just going to have to suspend that disbelief. So yeah, that's the first half. Um, I'm gonna go grab a drink. I don't know about y'all, but, uh, we're gonna take a quick 10 and then be back here because Brian's got a thing for us. And then we'll find out how all these crazy kids end up. All right? Cool. See ya. I forgot to take my headphones off. Not my proudest moment.
another drink. I know I did. <sighs> Straight brandy on the rocks. Now, for those of you who've never been to a Boozy Bart show, again, please do not consider this a normal one. Two, normally this is the part where we bring Brian out on the stage and have him do a song. Well, we can't do that because we don't have a stage. But we can bring back Brian! Hey, Brian! Hey, it's me! It's you! Now, Brian is not only a gifted actor and a talented comedian, he is also a very handy songsmith. He writes a song for every show. And when I say every show, I mean every show. If we do three shows, he does three different songs, one for each night. Well, we're only doing one show for this one. So, take it away, Brian. Thanks. Uh, Old-time Barflies may remember this one. I may have done it before, but it's so good I had to do it again, because who knows when the next time we'll get to do this show. So, uh, let's get started. <clears throat> and I'm definitely playing the piano the whole time, not just out of loop. Just kidding. There we go. Uh, let me tell you. Well, my name is Malvolio. Here's my situation. A servant to nobility was my station. To the lovely Olivia, sweet and kind. And I swore in time that I'd make her mine. Because I knew we would make the perfect couple. But one day my plan ran into some trouble. When the Duke of Sino in his fancy clothes came to Olivia. Everybody. <laughs> That's where that goes. 
Yes. Through in a fake trailer at the end. I'm excited. I can't wait to read that next Shakespeare play. Oh, yeah. It's going to be good. It's <laughs> yeah. in development. He's still working yeah. on it. Yeah. So, uh, along with doing these weird shows here, mm-hmm. you've been doing a few other uh, online type things. Yeah. What do you got coming up? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I have anything coming up yet, but you can also always go to uh, Ampersand Theater, uh, their Facebook page, or their YouTube channel, and I uh, pop up in a few things here and there, uh, some of the Zoom things, and they're also putting up some old shows, old live shows that they've done, where I am sometimes featured. Uh, also, you can also listen to the uh, podcast, Who Let Me, no, well, you can listen to Who Let Me Read This, and you can also listen to Turn to Page okay. Run, the one that I'm in. Uh, it's still up there, uh, wherever you get your podcasts, it's uh, where uh, Nick Fear and myself and a bunch of other funny people read through old uh, game books like Choose Your Own Adventure uh, and the like and review them and it's a good time and it's you know, we're on a, a hiatus right now but we'll be back so you can catch up. Excellent. Let me read this and turn to page fun. Um, yeah. Anyone else have anything? Sarah, I know you got stuff. Go. I've always got stuff. Mm-hmm. Um... So, like Brian said, Who Let Me Read This is still a thing that you can listen to on your podcatcher of choice and or YouTube. Um, It's a bunch of funny folks from Milwaukee-ish reading books that were problematic and talking about them. Um, And also, if you like Nick Fear, who's not in this show, and you like me... Who is it? Like Sex in the City. Um, Nick and I have been watching our way through Sex in the City and doing Facebook Lives about it. Um, about the show is called Carrie Bradshaw is a bad friend. Um, the link is Carrie Bradshaw's bad friend on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash Carrie Bradshaw is a bad friend. Um, every weekend, every Saturday and Sunday, we watch episodes of Sex and City and then talk about them. So it's a lot of talking about relationships and friendships and yeah. also getting very far off track. So I've, I've been enjoying it thus far. <laughs> uh, anyone else? <laughs> anyone else got anything? Got any plugs? Going once? Going twice? All right, that's it for plugs. Uh, if you got anything else, throw it in the comments, because we're all bored right now. We can all use as much entertainment as possible. So, let me get back to, yeah, there we are, page 26. So let us now return to the world of William Shakespeare's Twelfth Night Raw-ish. Act 3, Scene 1, Olivia's Garden. Enter Viola, and opposite, enter Sir Toby Belch and Sir Andrew. Let me in. Where's Viola? I can't come in. My host has stopped the video. Sarah, let him back on video. In the meantime, oh, you don't, yeah, in the meantime oh, we know what Blake looks oh, like. Yes. Uh, so saves you, gentlemen. You. You, sir. Will you encounter the house? My niece is desirous you should enter, if your trade be to her. Uh, oh, you know, like that. bound to your niece, sir. I mean, I mean... She's the list of my voyage. Enter Olivia. Most the cupless lady, the heavens rain odors upon you. Odors? That you so rare courtier. Rain odors well. Uh, my, my matter hath no voice, but to your own most pregnant and vouchsafed ear. Odors? Pregnant? And vouchsafed? I'll get them all three already. Let the garden door be shut and leave me to my hearing. 
then Sir Toby Belch and Sir Andrew. Give me your hand, sir. My duty, madam, and most humble servant. What is your name? Cesario is your servant's name, fair princess. <laughs> My servant, sir, it was never Mary would since Moly Fainine was called compliment your servant to the Count Orsino, you. Uh, and he's yours, and his must needs be yours, so your servant's servant is your servant, madam. Uh, oh, by your leave, I pray you, I beg you, never speak again of him. But would you undertake another suit? I had rather hear you to solicit that the music from the spheres. Dear, dear lady. Give me leave, beseech you. I did send, after that last enchantment you did hear, a ring in chase of you. So did I abuse myself, my servant, and I fear me you to force, oh, under your hard construction must I sit to force that on you in a shameful cunning which you knew none of yours. What might you think? I, I pity you. Love? No, no, not not agrees. Uh, for tis a vulgar proof that we very oft we pity other means. Why then, methinks time to smile again. Bong, bong, bong. Oh, the clock abrades me with this waste of time. Be not afraid, good youth. I will not have you. And yet, when wit and youth is come to harvest, your wife is like to reap a proper man. There lies your way due west. Then westward, oh! Grace and good disposition attend your ladyship. Uh, yield nothing, madam, to my lord by me? Stay. I prithee tell me what thou thinkest of me. Uh, that you do think you are not what you are. If I think so, I think the same of you. Uh, then think you right. I am not what I am. I would you were as I would have you be. Uh, would it be better, madam, than I am? Uh, I wish it might, for now I am your fool. Cesario, by the roses of the spring, by maidhood, honor, truth, and everything, I love thee so that longer all thy pride, nor wit, nor reason can my passion hide. Do not extort thy reasons from this clause, for that I will... Thou therefore has no cause, but rather reason thus with reason better. Love sought is good, but given unsought better. Um, by innocence I swear, and by my youth, I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth, and that no woman has, nor never none, shall mistress be of it, save I alone. And so adieu, my good madam, nevermore, will I my master's tears to you deplore. Yet, come again, for thou perhaps mayst move this heart which now it pours to like his love. Excellent. Scene two, Olivia's house. Enter Sir Toby Belch and Sir Andrew. No faith, I'll not stay a jot longer. Thy reason, dear Venom, give thy reason. Mary, I saw your niece do more favors to the court serving man than ever she bestowed upon me. Why then, build me thy fortunes upon the basis of valor. Challenge me the court's youth to fight with him. Hurt him in a, eleven places. My niece shall take note of it and assure thyself there is no love broker in the world that can prevail in man's commendation with women in the port of valor. <laughs> Will you bear me a challenge to him? Go! Write it in a martial hand. Be cursed and brief. Let there be gall enough in thy ink. And thou write with a goose pen. No matter about it. Where shall I find you? We'll call thee at the cubicle. Go. Do it. Exit Sir Andrew and enter Maria. 
Ah, look where the youngest friend of mine comes. If you desire the spleen and will nap yourself into stitches, <laughs> follow me. Yon Gold Malvolio is turned heathen, a very renegado. <laughs> <He's in Yellowstone. laughs> and cross guarded! <laughs> Most villainously. He does smile his face into more lines than is the new map with the augmentation of the Indies. <laughs> I know my lady will strike him, but <laughs> if she do, he'll smile and take it for a great favor. <laughs> Come! Bring us! Bring us where he is! Exunt! <laughs> Scene four, Olivia's garden. Enter Olivia and Maria. Where is Malvolio? He is sad and civil and sits well for a servant with my fortunes. He is coming, madame, but in a very strange manner. He, he is sure possessed, madame. Go call him hither. Exit Maria. I am as mad as he, if sad and merry madness equal be. Re-enter Maria with Malvolio. Uh, how now, Malvolio? Great lady, help, help. Uh, smilest thou, I sent for thee upon a sad occasion. A sad lady? It could be sad. This, this does... Oh, God. This does make some obstruction in the blood. This oh, cross gartering, but uh, what of that? <laughs> oh, why, how dost thou, man? What is the matter with thee? Oh, not black in my mind, though yellow in my legs. <laughs> well, go to bed, Melvolio. Oh, to bed? Oh, hi, sweetheart, and I'll come to thee. <laughs> God comfort thee. What dost thou smile and kiss my hand so often? At your request, yes. Nightingales and so dolls. Why appear you with this ridiculous boldness before my lady? <laughs> Be not afraid of greatness. Twas well writ. What meanest thou by that, Malvolio? You remember who commended thy yellow stockings? Yellow stockings? And wish to see thee cross garter? Oh, murdered! Go to thou art maid, if thou desirest to be so. Am I maid? If not, let me see thee a servant still. <sighs> this is very midsummer madness. Good Maria, let this fellow be looked to. Where's my cousin Toby? Let some of my people have a special care of him. I would not have him miscarry for the half of my dowry. Excellent, Olivia and Maria. <laughs> Do you come near me now? No worse man than Sir Toby to look to me. Well, it concurs directly with the letter. What can be said? Nothing. Re-enter Maria with Sir Toby Belch. <laughs> Which way is he? In the name of sanctity. Go off. I discard you. Let me enjoy my private. Get off. Bro, oh, how hollow the fiend speaks within him. Thank God. He be not be the witch. Why? How now, my Bogluck? How dost thou, Chuck? Sir. I, Biddy, come with me. What, man? Tis not for gravity to play a cherry pit with Satan. Hang him, Falcalia. Get him to his prayers, good Sir Toby. Get him to pray. My prayers, minx. No, uh, I warrant you, he will not hear of godly things. You go hang yourselves all. You are idle, shallow things. I am not of your element. You shall know me more hereafter. <laughs> Exit. <laughs> Come. We'll have him in a dark room and bound. My niece is already in the belief that he's mad. We may carry it thus for our pleasures and his penance. Till our very pastime, tired out of breath, Prompt us to have our mercy on him. But see, but see. Enter Sir Andrew. More matter for a, a May morning. Here's the challenge. Read it. Warrant there's vinegar and pepper in it. Ooh, is it 
so saucy? I had the vinegar already. Give it to me. Youth, whatsoever thou art, thou art but a scurvy fellow. Good. And Davian? I will waylay thee going home where it is, where if it by chance to kill me. Good. Thou killest me like a rogue and a villain. Fare thee well, and have God mercy upon one of our souls. He may have mercy upon mine, but my hope is better. And so look to thyself, thy friend, as thou used him, and thy sworn enemy, Andrew Agnesic. If this letter move him not, his legs cannot. I'll give it to him. You may have very fit occasion for it. He is now in some commerce with my lady, and will buy and buy the pot. Go, Sir Andrew. Scout me for him at the corner of the orchard like a bum belly. So soon as ever thou seest him, draw. And as thou drawest, swear horrible. Nay, let me alone for swearing. Exit. Now I will not deliver his letter. He will find it comes from a clod pole. But, sir, I will deliver his challenge by word of mouth. Set upon Agrichid is a notable report of valor. Oh, hang up. Hang up. And drive the gentleman, as I know his youth will aptly receive it, into a most hideous opinion of his rage, skill, fury, and impetuosity. <laughs> it will so fright them both that they will kill one another by the look. Like cockatrices. Re enter Olivia with Viola as a starter. He comes with your niece. Give them way till he take leave and presently after him. Uh, I will meditate the while upon some horrid message for a challenge. Exunt Sir Toby Belch and Maria. I beseech you, come again tomorrow. What shall you ask of me that I'll deny? That honor saved may upon asking give. Nothing but this. Your true love for my master. Uh, how? With mine honor, may I give him that which I have given to you? I will acquit you. Well, come again tomorrow. Fare thee well. A fiend like thee might bear my soul to hell. Exit Olivia. Re-enter Sir Toby Belch. Uh, gentlemen, don't save thee. And, and you, sir. That defense thou hast, to take thee to it of what nature the wrongs art thou hast done him. I know not, but thy interceptor, full of despite, bloody as the hunter, attends thee at the orchard end. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sure no man hath any quarrel to me. You'll find it otherwise, I assure you. Therefore, if you hold your life at any price, betake you to your God, for your opposite hath in him what youth, strength, skill, and wrath can furnish man withal. I pray you, sir, what is he? He is knight, dubbed with unhanched rapier and uncoppered consideration, but he is a devil in a private wrong. I I beseech you, do me this courteous office, as to know of the knight what my offense to him is. It, it is something of my negligence, nothing of my purpose. <laughs> I will do so. Exit Sir Toby Belch. Re-enter Sir Toby Belch with Sir Andrew. Good thing he was easy to find. <laughs> Why, man, he's a very devil. I've not seen such a Ferrago. They say he has been fencer to the Sophie. Glad, aunt. And I thought he had been valiant and on cunning in fence. I'd have seen him damned ere I'd have challenged him. Let him let the matter slip. And I'll give him my horse. Gray Capulet. 
I'll make the motion. Stand here, make a good show on it. This shall end without the perdition of souls. <laughs> I'll ride your horse as well as I ride you. <laughs> Re-enter by all. Ah, there's no remedy, sir. He will fight with you for an oath's sake. Hey, God defend me. A little thing would make me tell them how much I lack of a man. Come, Sir Andrew. There's no remedy. The gentleman will, for his honor's sake, have one bout with you. Come on, to it. Great God, he keep his oath. I assure you, tis against my will. They draw off. Enter Antonio. Ah, put up your sword if this young gentleman hath no defense. I take the fault on me. If you do offend him, I for defy you. You do? Sir, why? What are you? One, sir, that for his love dares yet do move. Then you have heard him brag to you, he will. Enter, officer. Antonio. I arrest thee at the suit of Count Orsino. Oh, you do mistake me, sir. <laughs> no, sir, no, Jap. I know your favor well. Though no, now you have no sneak cap on your head. Take him uh, away. He knows I know him well. Uh, I must obey. Uh, this comes with seeking you, but there's no remedy. I shall answer it. What will you do? Now my necessity makes me to ask you for my purse. You stand amazed, but, but be of comfort. Come, sir. Away. I must entreat you some of that money. What, what money, sir? For, for the fair kindness you've showed me here, in part being prompted by your present trouble out of my lean and low ability, I'll lend you something like that. Will you deny me now? It's possible that my deserts to you can lack persuasion. Do not check my misery. Lest then it make me so unsound a man as to upbraid you with those kindness that I have done for you. I know of none, nor I you by voice or any feature. Ah, oh, by heavens themselves! Come, oh, sir, I pray you, uh, go. Let me, let me speak a little. This you that you see here, I snatched one half out of the jaws of death, relieved him with such sanctity of love, and to his image with me thought did promise, most venerable worth did I devotion. Oh, what's that to us? The time goes by. Away! Oh, oh, but oh, how vile and idle proves this god thou hast, Sebastian, done good feature, shame. The man grows mad, away with him, come. Come, sir. Lead me on. Exit with officer. Remember, uh, Sebastian and Viola look exactly alike. He, he named Sebastian. I, my brother, know, yet living in my glass, even such and so, in favor was my brother, and he went still in this fashion, color, ornament, for him I imitate. Oh, shit. If it prove tempests are kind and and salt waves fresh in love. Exit, Viola. A very dishonest, paltry boy. And more a coward than a hare. His dishonesty appears in leaving his friend here in necessity and denying him. I'll go after him again and beat him. Do. Cuff him soundly, and but never draw thy sword. And I do not. I dare lay any money to be nothing yet. Excellent. Act four, scene one. Before Olivia's house, enter Sebastian and Clown. <sighs> Will you make me believe I am not sent for you? Go to, go to, thou art a foolish fellow. Let me be clear of thee. Well held out in faith. No, I do not know you, nor am I not sent to you by my lady to bid you speak with her, nor is your name not Master Cesario, nor is this not my nose, neither. Uh, Nothing that is so is so. 
I pray thee, vent thy folly somewhere else. Thou knowest not me. Vent folly. He has heard this word of some great man and now applies it to a fool. Vent my folly, I prithee. Well, uh, now, ungird thy strangeness, and tell me what I shall vent to my lady. Shall I vent to her that thou art coming? I pray thee, foolish Greek, depart from me. There's money for thee, clink clink. If you tarry longer, I shall give thee worse payment. By my troth, thou hast an open hand. Uh, these wise men that give fools money get themselves to good report uh, after 14 years' purchase. Enter Sir Andrew and Sir Toby Belch. Now, sir, have I met you again? There's for you! Oh, why? <laughs> There's for thee! And... There! And... There! Are all the people mad? Get rid of me! Hold, sir! Or I'll throw your dagger over the house. You ready for this, Sir Andrew? Ladies, <laughs> not be in some of your coats for toughens. <laughs> Exit clown. Come, sir. Hold! <sighs> Let him alone. I'll go another way to work with him. I'll have an action of battery against him, if there be any law in Illyria. Though I struck him first. Yeah. Yet it's no matter for that. Mm. Still, let go of my arm, bro. Come, sir. I will not let you go. Come, my young soldier, put up your iron. You are well fleshed. Come on, come on. <laughs> I will be free of thee. <laughs> what wouldst thou now? If thou dost tempt me further, draw thy sword. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> hey, then I must have an answer to this malapert blood from you. Enter Olivia. Hold, Toby, on thy life. I charge thee, hold. Madam. Will it ever be thus? Ungracious wretch, fit for the mountains, for the barbarous caves, where manners ne'er were preached, out of my sight. Be not offended, dear Cesario. Rudes be. Be gone. Exempt Sir Toby Belch and Sir Andrew. I prithee, gentle friend, let thy fair wisdom, not thy passion, sway in this uncivil, and thou unjust extent against thy peace. Go with me to my house. Do not deny, beshrew his soul for me. He started one poor heart of mine in thee. What relish is in this? How <laughs> runs the stream? To, or am I mad? Or else is this a dream? <laughs> or I fancy to still my sense and left sleep. If it be thus a dream, still let me sleep. Nay, come, I prithee. Would thou be ruled by me? Madam, I will. Oh, say so and so be. Excellent. Scene two, Olivia's house. Enter Maria and Clown. Nay, I, I prithee, put on this gown and uh, this beard. <laughs> And uh, make him believe thou art uh, <clears throat> Sir Tobas the Curate. Do it quickly. Enter Sir. Do bless thee, Master Parson. What ho! You say peace in this prison. Uh, the knave counterfeits well. The good knave. Nobody knows. The trouble I see. Who, who calls there? Uh, Sir Topaz the curate, who comes to visit me. Malvolio lunatic. Exempt Sir Toby Belt and Maria and enter Malvolio. Ha! Ha! 
Sir Topas, Sir Topas, good Sir Topas. Go, go to my lady. Out, hyper! Bollocked! Accessed thou this man! Takest thou, talkest thou nothing but of ladies! Oh, good, good, Sir Topas, do not think I am mad. They, they have laid me here in hideous darkness. I am the dishonest Satan. Call me by the most modest terms, for I am one of those gentle ones that will use the devil himself with courtesy. What is the opinion of Pythagoras concerning wildfowl? Uh, that the soul of our grandam might haply inhabit a bird. What is thou of this opinion? Why, I, I think no way of the soul, and, and no way prove his opinion. Mm, fare thee well. Remain thou still in darkness, for thou shalt be in a Pythagoras, ere I will allow of thy wits. Fare thee well, Sir Topas, Sir Topas. <laughs> Robin, jolly Robin, and tell me how thy lady does. A fool! She loves another. Oh, who calls, huh? Good, good fool. Help me to a candle uh, and, and pen, ink, and paper, and as I am a gentleman, I, I will live to be thankful to thee for it. Master Malvolio? Hi, <laughs> good fool! But, alas, sir, how fell you beside your five wits? Well, they, they have here propertied me, kept me in darkness, sent ministers to me, assess and do all they can to face me out of my wits. I advise you what you say. The minister is here. Uh, sir Topaz! <laughs> Maintain no words with him, good fellow! Uh, who? Who, I, sir? Oh, no, no, not I, sir. <laughs> God be with you, good Stutopas. Merry amen. Uh, merry amen with you. It's a fool, 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 I say. Alas, sir, be patient. Uh, uh, what say you, sir? I, I am shent for speaking to you. Good, good fool. Help me to some light. And some paper. I tell thee, I am well in my wit as any man in Olivia. Well a day that you were, sir. By this hand I am. Can you see my hand? It's it. By, by this hand I am. Good fool. Some ink, paper, and light, and convey what I will set down to my lady. It shall advantage thee more than ever the bearing of letter did. I will help you to it. <laughs> tell me true. Are you not mad indeed? Or... Do you but counterfeit? Believe me, I am not. I tell thee true. Nay, I'll never believe a madman until I see his brains. I will fetch you light and paper and ink. Oh, prithee, be gone. I am gone, sir, and anon, sir, I'll be with you again. And you, good man, devil. Exit. <sighs> Scene three, Olivia's guard. Enter Sebastian. <laughs> this is the air. Oh, that is the glorious sun. <laughs> this pearl she gave me. I do feel it and see it. And though it is wonder that enwraps me thus, Yet, <laughs> tis not madness. Oh, but uh, <laughs> here the lady comes. Enter Olivia. Blame not this haste of mine. If what? you mean well, now go with me into the chantry, and by underneath that consecrated roof, plight me the full assurance of your faith that my most jealous and too doubtful soul may live at peace. What do you say? Uh, I'll go with you. And having thus sworn, ever will be true. Then lead the way, good husband, and heaven so shine that they may fairly note this act of mine. Excellent. <laughs> act five, scene one, before Olivia's house. Enter clown, enter Duke Orsino and Viola, and enter Antonio and officer. Uh, here, here comes the man, sir, that did rescue me. Orsino, oh, this is that Antonio that took the phoenix and her frock from Candy here in the streets, 
desperate of shame and state, in private brattle did we apprehend him. He, he did me kindness, sir, drew on my side, but in conclusion put strange speech upon me. I know not what was but distraction. Notable pirate, thou saltwater thief, what foolish boldness brought thee to their mercies? Whom thou, in terms so bloody and so dear, hast made thine enemies. O oh, Orsino, noble sir, be pleased that I shake off these names you give me. Antonio, never get with thief or pirate, though, I confess, I'm base and ground enough, Orsino's enemy. A witchcraft drew me hither, that most ingrateful boy, beside. From the rude seas embraced in foamy mouth did I redeem a wreck past hope he was. His life I gave him, and did thereto add my love, and did my love without retention or restraint all his dedication. How, how can this be? When came he to this town? Today, my lord, and for, the, and for three months before, no interim. Not a minute's vacancy, both day and night, did we keep company. <sighs> Enter Olivia. Oh, here comes the Countess. Now heaven walks on earth. But for thee, fellow, 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 <laughs> thy words are madness. Three months this youth hath tended upon me, but more of that anon. Take him aside. Would my lord, but that he may not have, wherein Olivia may seem serviceable. Cesario, you do not keep promise with me. Madam! Gracious, Olivia. <laughs> what do you say, Cesario? Good my lord. My, my lord would speak. My duty hushes me. If it be aught to the old tune, my lord, it is as fat and fulsome to my ear as howling after music. Still so cruel. Still so constant, Lord. Since you to no re to non regardance cast my faith, and that I partly know the instrument that screws me from my true place in your favor, like with the marble breasted tyrant still, but this dominion, whom I know you love, and whom by heaven I swear I tender dearly. Him will I tear out, that cruel eye. Where he sits crowned in his master's spite. Come, boy, with me. My thoughts are ripe in mischief. I'll sacrifice the lamb I do love. Love you, Cesario. Despite a raven's heart within a dove. And, and I, most jocund, apt and willingly, to you do rest, a thousand deaths would die. Where goes Cesario? After him I love, more than I love these eyes, more than I love my life, more by all mores than e'er shall I love wife. Come, away. Whither, my lord, Cesario, husband, stay. Husband? Aye, husband. Can he that deny? Her husband, Sirrah? No, no, not I. Oh, thou dissembling cub. What wilt thou be when time hath sowed a grizzle on thy case? Farewell, and take her. Wreck thy feet, where thou and I henceforth may never meet. My, my lord, I do protest. Oh, do not swear. What little faith thou, though thou hast too much fear. Sir Sir Andrew. For the love of God, a surgeon, send one presently to Sir Toby. What's the matter? He has broke my head across and has given Sir Toby a bloody cockstone too. Who has done this, Sir Andrew? The Count's gentleman. One Cesario, we took him for a coward, but he's the
fairy devil incarnate? What, why do you speak to me? I never touched you. If a bloody cock so be a hurt, you have hurt me. I think you say nothing by a bloody cockstone. Enter Sir Toby Belch and the clown. How now, gentlemen? How is this? That's all one has hurt me. And there is the end on it. Sot. Where's the sot? There's the sot. Did the dick surgeon sot? He's drunk, Sir Toby. Uh, an hour gone. His eyes were set at eight in the morning. Uh, then he's a rogue. Uh, Passy measures Phaeton. I hate a drunken rogue. Oh, away oh, with him. Make this havoc with them. I'll help you, Sir Toby, because we'll be dressed together. Will you? Will you help? An asshead and a coxcomb and a knave and a thin faced knave of gall. Get him to bed and let his hurt be looked to. Exempt the clown, Sir Toby Belch, and Sir Andrew, and enter Sebastian. Oh, I'm sorry, madam. I have hurt your kinsman. But had it been the brother of my blood, I must have done no less for wit and safety. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, what? Do I stand there? I never had a brother, nor can there be that deity of my nature of here and everywhere. I had a sister whom the blind waves and surges have devoured of charity. What kin are you to me? What countryman? What name? What parentage? Messily, Sebastian was my father. Such a Sebastian was my brother, too. So that he suited to his watery tomb. If, if spirits can assume both form and suit, you come to fright us. Were you a woman as the rest goes even? I should my tears let fall upon your chin and say, try to welcome drowned Viola. If, if nothing, let's, let's to make us happy both. But this, my masculine usurped attire, do not embrace me until each circumstance of place, time, fortune, do go here and jump that, that I am Viola. Oh. 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 So comes it, lady. Oh, you have been mistook by nature er, to her bias during that. A, you would have been contracted to a maid. Nor are you therein, by my life deceived. You are betrothed both to a maid <laughs> and to a man. Be not amazed. Don't be amazed. Right, noble, if, really this fucking. Blood, if, if this be so, as yet the class seems true, I, I shall have share in this most happy wreck. Boy, thou hast said to me a thousand times, thou never shouldst love a woman like me. And, and all of those sayings will I overswear, and those swearings keep as true in soul as doth orbed continent, the fire that severs day from night. Give me thy hand, and let me see thee in thy woman's weave. The noble lady. Well, not mystery. And yet, yet, alas, now I remember me basic witch. Gentlemen, he's such distract. Wait, enter the cloud with Malvolio. Is this the madman? Aye, my lord, the same. How now, Malvolio? Madam, you have done me wrong. Notorious wrong. Have I, Malvolio? No. Lady, you have. Can you peruse this letter? Hmm? You must not now 
don't deny it is your hand. And tell me in the modesty of honor, why do you have to give me such clear lights of favor? Bade me come smiling and cross garter to you to put on yellow stockings and frown upon Sir Toby in the light of people. And acting this in an obedient hope, why you have suffered me to be imprisoned in a dark house visited by the priests and made the most notorious gack and gull that e'er played in Vincent Plato. Tell me why. Alas, Malvolio, this is not my writing. What? Oh, I confess, much like the character, but out of question, tis Maria's hand. But, madam, hear me speak most freely. I confess myself and Toby set this device upon Malvolio here, upon some stubborn and uncourteous parts we had conceived against him. Maria writ the letter at Sir Toby's great importance in recompense whereof he hath married her. <laughs> oh, poor. Alas, poor fool, how they have baffled thee. Why, some are born great, some have greatness, uh, some have achieved greatness, and some have greatness thrown upon them. <laughs> I was one in this interlude, one Sir Topes, sir. But that's all one. By the Lord, fool, I am not mad! But do you remember? <laughs> what laugh you at to barren rascal? And you smile not? He's gagged. And thus, the great whirligig of time turns in her revenges. Your revenges? I'll be revenged on the whole pack of you, and your little dog, too. <laughs> Excellent Malfoyer. He hath been most notoriously abused. Pursue him and entreat him to a feast. When golden time covets, a solemn con combination shall be made of our dear souls. Meantime, sweet sister, we will not part from hence. Cesario, come. For so you shall be while you are a man, but when in other habits you are seen, Orsino's mistress and his fancy queen. Excellent! And that's the show! Hooray! Get all the players back on screen so I can talk about everybody. Yay! All right. Tonight, as Antonio was Nicole Alley. Yay! As as Maria was Jason Myers. As Sir Andrew Agachik was Joshua Klingman. As Sir Toby Belch, Stephen Welterstorff. As the clown, Jim Donaldson. As Malvolio, Brian Bear. As Olivia, Mandy Dieter. As Sebastian and our showrunner, Tom Cauley. As Duke Orsino, Sarah Wallace. And as Vi Viola slash Cesario, Blake Baranowski. And the whole time. Yeah, hold on. I was the whole time. Hey, I didn't get anybody. Right. All right. All right. Uh, my name's Jeremy. I hope you guys enjoyed the show tonight. I know we sure as hell did. Um, I want to thank all these guys for doing the thing that I do. Um, normally, this is where I thank the venue, but I am not going to thank Mark Zuckerberg. He is an evil, evil reptile person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Zuckerberg. But most importantly, I want to thank each and every one of you, because, as we all say, without you, we are just, just a bunch of drunks with a weird baby. Thank you very much for joining us on Zoom. See you in two weeks for the Trojan War. Uh, Sarah, if you want to end meeting. <laughs>